Hi everybody, today I'm working on a 2004 Mini Cooper S. Today I'll be installing a limited slip differential. This job is not too bad except for the part where you have to get the transmission out of the car. I won't show that part. I have a separate video on how to replace the clutch in an R53. All of the job is identical except for we're also going to take apart the transmission while it's out of the car. Oh, the process is basically identical for a Generation 2 Mini as well. It's a different transmission but it comes apart pretty much the same way. We'll be installing a Quaif Torsen differential. This is probably the best differential for street use. I have one of these in my GP2 and I love it. I'll put a link in the description where you can get one of these. This is a great part if you're going to be driving the car aggressively or on the track or even off the track. It really helps to reduce wheel spin on the inside wheel, especially under hard cornering or in the rain or anytime you have limited traction or different traction between the two wheels. The differential does not come with bearings. So we'll need a couple of those as well, and you'll need two of them. You might be able to pull the old bearings off of your old differential, but it's probably safer to just buy brand new ones. I'll put a link in the description where you can get these as well. You will also need an anaerobic gasket maker to reseal both sides of the transmission. We take apart the transmission using a Torx 40 socket, and I'm gonna, I have a scraper here as well, so I can scrape off any old gasket material. All right, so I'm gonna get the transmission up on the workbench. And I'm too lazy to pick it up, so I'm going to use this crane. There, no muscles needed. And the first thing we need to do is remove this bracket for the shift cables. These are also T40. Then we'll push the transmission up on its side. Take off the throwout bearing. And now we'll remove all of these Torx 40 bolts. They're all gold color. There's a bunch on the outside. And there's seven on the inside as well. There's one more bolt hidden under here. You can access it through a hole in the bell housing. So I'll put my socket underneath and I'll put the extension through the hole. Easy. So those should be all the bolts holding it together. And now we'll pry on it. There's a couple of tabs, one right here and another one here. And these are designed for prying. Don't pry too hard until you know all the bolts are out. Don't pry on the mated surface because you don't want to scratch it. Looks like it's hanging up here a little bit. So I'm going to grab a hammer and tap lightly. I'm going to pry here and tap at the same time. There we go, got it separated. And now we can see the inside of the transmission and here's the differential gear right here. So here we can see all the shift linkages and gears and all that fun stuff. But we don't need to mess with that at all because the differential just lifts right out. So the next thing we need to do is remove this ring gear. And these are 15 mil bolts. We'll just go around and remove all of them. Once we've done that, we'll flip it over and then gently tap the ringer off with the hammer. And this one fell right off. Sometimes you need to go around and tap it to get it to come off. So here's the old diff. We can set this aside. Okay, this is the part that's probably gonna be most challenging for most people. We need to press the new bearings onto the snout for the uh, differential here. And most likely you're gonna need a bearing press for that because this is a uh, compression fit here. If you don't have one, you could take these parts into a shop and ask them to press it for you, and they'll do it for some very reasonable number. So we'll get this all set up. All right, this shouldn't require too much force, but without a hydraulic press, you're gonna be struggling a little bit. There it goes. You just need to push it down in. You don't need to like force it farther than it needs to go. And then we'll turn it over. And we'll do the same thing with the other bearing. All done. The bearing does come with a new race here, but you most likely won't need it. 
you'll just want to inspect the old race and make sure that it's in good condition. If it is, you're fine. If not, you're going to want to use a bearing race puller and then swap these out. But these ones look perfectly fine. So now that we've got the new bearings installed, we'll reinstall the ring gear. So we need to make sure that the holes are lined up with the threads on the new diff. If they're off by the tiniest amount, you're probably not going to get the bolts to go through. And then, if necessary, tap it down. And then we're going to want to put some red thread locker, permanent thread locker onto them so that they don't back out. I'm not aware of a torque value for these bolts, but you're going to want to tighten them down to about 70 to 80 foot-pounds. I'm going to go through and just make them snug at first. And then make your final tightening pass. Okay, that part's good. Now I'll clean the part off to make sure there's no foreign material in here. You don't have to worry about lubing it up because this will be lubricated by gear oil inside the transmission. So you don't need to pack the bearings or anything like that. Next, we're gonna to wanna to clean off both halves of the transmission, the mating surfaces. And there's very little seal here, so basically just go over with a scr scraper. These are highly accurately machined parts, so it needs almost no sealant at all. It's almost like the sticky stuff on the back of a piece of tape. And it looks like we got everything, so I'll just clean it off and make sure it's dry and, and there's no oil on it. And we'll do the same thing to the other half. What I'm going to do actually is completely clean this part because when I flip it over, there's a little oil in the pockets here and I don't want any of that contaminating my sealant. So I'm going to spray this off with brake cleaner and uh, get it all out of there. And I'll let it sit here for a while so all that uh, leftover brake, brake fluid can flash off. All right, this half of the transmission is nice and dry. I am going to put a little bit of grease on these uh, dowels here and here as well. And I'll put a little bit here too. And that's because those dowels and those bearings have to go into these holes here. And it's a pretty tight fit, so it'll just help the whole casing to go back together more easily. So now we can apply the new anaerobic seal. And it doesn't take a lot. Just make sure you have a constant bead all the way. And go on the inside of the bolt holes. All right, so now we've got a good clean bead. We'll put the differential back in. Just turn it and make sure it seats nicely. And then we'll put the casing back on. And I'm gonna gently tap to get it to go back together. Okay, so that's gone back together nicely. I'm going to turn this and make sure everything turns nice. Feels good. And then now we can go ahead and uh, put all the bolts back in. And then I'm just going to carefully snug them down. All of the bolts at first. And if we've done it right, we should see a little bit of the aerobic seal squeezing out pretty much along the entire case line, along the entire seam. And now I'll go back and tighten them all the rest of the way. And I think these should probably be about 25 or 30 foot-pounds. That's about this much. So it looks good. I can see uh, aerobic sealant all the way around the case. So this should not leak at all. And then lastly, I'm going to reinstall the uh, shift bracket.
All right, so that's all there is to it. That's how to install a limited slip differential in a R53 Mini Cooper S. Be sure to check the link for parts and tools. You might also want to replace the input shaft seal while you're in there. Oh, the process is basically identical for a Generation 2 Mini as well. It's a different transmission, but it comes apart pretty much the same way. Thanks for watching and bye-bye.